Well, hello there, you perfectly lovely little muggles. My name is Sarah, and this evening I'm reading Chapter 4 from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This chapter is called The Keeper of the Keys. Boom! They knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon? He said stupidly. There was a crash behind them, and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package that he had brought with them. Who's there? he shouted. I warn you, I'm armed! There was a pause and then... Smash! The door was hit with such a force that it swung clean off its hinges and with a deafening crash landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long shaggy mane of hair and a wild tangled beard. But you could make out his eyes glinting like black beetles under all the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door and fitted it easily back onto the frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat, frozen with fear. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching terrified behind Uncle Vernon. And there's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkling in a smile. Last time I saw you, you was only a baby, said the giant. You're a lot like your dad, and you've got your mum's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny rasping sound. I, I, I demand, I demand that you leave at once, sir, he said. You're breaking, you're breaking and entering. Oh, shut up, Dursley, you great prune, said the giant. He reached over the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's hands, bent it into a knot as easily as if it had been made of rubber and threw it into the corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mouse being trodden on. Anyway, hurry, said the giant, turning his back on the Dursleys. A very happy birthday to you. Got summit for you here. I might have sat on it at some point, but it will taste all right. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled a slightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers, and inside was a large, sticky chocolate cake with Happy Birthday, Harry, written on it in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost on the way to his mouth. And what he said instead was, Who, who are you? The giant chuckled. Two, I haven't introduced myself. Uh, Rubius Agrid, keeper of the keys and the grounds at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and he shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. Oh, I'd not say no to so much stronger if you've got it, mind. His eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled crisp packets in it and he snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back, a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering lights, and Harry felt a warmth wash over him as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began talking all sorts of things and began taking all sorts of things out of his pockets. A copper kettle, a squashy packet of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chip mugs and a bottle of some amber liquid which he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Soon the hut was full of the sound and smell of a sizzling sausages. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the, the first six fat, juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Yeah, great Putin of a son. Don't need fattening anymore, Dursley. Don't you worry. 
He passed the sausages to Harry, who was so hungry he'd never tasted anything so wonderful. But he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed about to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me a Hagrid, he said. Everybody does. And like I told you, I'm the keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know about Hogwarts, of course. Uh, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Hagrid said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back into the shadows. It's them I should be sorry. I know you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought you wouldn't even know about Hogwarts, for crying out loud. Do you never wonder where your parents learnt it all? Oh, what? said Harry. Oh, what? Hagrid thundered. Now, just wait one second. And he leapt to his feet. In his anger, he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing about, about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He'd been to school after all and his marks weren't that bad. I know some things, he said. I, I can, you know, do maths and stuff. But Hagrid, Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, About our world. I mean, your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. What world? Dursley! He boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like... <laughs> Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mum and dad, he said. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, the famous. You're famous. What? My mum and dad weren't, weren't famous, were they? You don't know. He, Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are, he said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell that boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have quailed under the furious look Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him. Never told him what was in the letter that Dumbledore left for him. I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it. And you kept it from him all those years. Kept what from me? said Harry eagerly. Stop! I forbid you! cried Uncle Vernon in panic. And Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Oh, go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a, a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Harry, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping gooden. Once you've been trained up a bit, I'd say. With a mum and a dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take the yellowish envelope, addressed in emerald green to Mr H. Potter, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the, rec the letter and read. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederation of Wizards. <coughs> Dear Mr Potter, we are pleased to invite you uh, to have a place at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find and close a list, list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on the 1st of September. I await your owl by no later than the 31st of July. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks and he couldn't decide which to ask first. 
After a few minutes, she stammered, What does it mean? They await my owl? Gallopin' Gorgons, that reminds me, said Harry, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse. And from yet another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl. A real, live, rather ruffled looking owl. A long quill and a roll of parchment. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note which Harry could read upside down. Dear Mr Dumbledore, given Harry his letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow, weather's horrible, hope you are well, Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl which clamped it in his beak, went to the door and threw the owl out into the storm. Then he came back and sat down as though this was as normal as talking on the telephone. Harry realised his mouth was open and he closed it quickly. Where was I? said Hagrid. But at that moment, Uncle Vernon, still ashen-faced, but still looking very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going! Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see a great muggle like you stop him, he said. A what? said Harry, interested. A muggle, said Hagrid. It's what you call non-magic folk like them. And it's your lay, it's your bad luck if you grew up in a family of the biggest muggles that I have ever laid eyes on. We swore when we took him in that we would put a stop to this rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. Swore that we would stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You knew I'm a wizard. Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Knew, of course we knew. How could you not be? My dratted sister being what she was. Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to the school and came home every holiday with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for what she was, a freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that. They were very proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw breath and then went ranting on. It seemed like she'd been wanting to say all of this for years. Then she met that potter at school and then left and got married and had you. And of course, I knew you'd be just the same, just as strange, just as, as abnormal. And then, if you please, she went and got herself blown up and we got landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, Blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash? roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Dursleys scuttled back to their corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? It's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in our world knows his name. But, but why? What happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face and he looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting a hold of you. How much you, you didn't know, but, but Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's got to. You can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the, the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. Mind, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery, parts of it. He sat down, stared into the fire for a few seconds, and then he said, It begins, I suppose, with with a person called... But it's incredible, you, you don't know his name. Everyone in the world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. <clears throat> no one does. Why not? Gulping gargoyles. Harry, Peter, people are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went bad. As bad as he could go. Worse. Worse than worse, and his name was... Harry gulped, but no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah, I can't spell it. All right, Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyway, this wizard, about 20 years ago, started looking for followers. Got him too. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power. Because he was getting himself power, all right. Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust. 
didn't dare get friendly with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things happened. He was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him. And he killed them. Horribly. One of the only safe places left was Hogwarts. Reckon that Dumbledore's the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try try taking the school. Not not just then, anyway. Now, <clears throat> your mum and dad were as good a witch and wizard as, as I have ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in the day. Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get him on his side before. Probably knew that they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted to be out of the way. All anyone knows, he turned up in the village where you was all living on Halloween ten years ago. You were just a year old. He came to your house and... and... Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with the sound like a foghorn. <gasps> Sorry, but it's that sad. Knew your mum and dad and lots of people. You couldn't find them anymore. You know, you know who killed him. And then, and this is the real mystery of the thing. He tried to kill you too. Wanted to make a clean job of it, I suppose. Or maybe he just liked killing by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead. That was no ordinary cut. That's what you get when a powerful evil curse touches you. Took care of your mum and dad and your house even, but it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. <gasps> I'm going to stop there. Now, hope you have had good old cleaning your teeth. A good old wash, wash, wash of your hands. And I want you to snuggle in nice and cosy. Give yourself a great big cuddle. Because you deserve it. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow evening. Night, night.